I'm Ken Greenberg. I'm an urban designer, uh, principal of Greenberg Consultants, and based in Toronto. As cities get denser, and Toronto is certainly experiencing huge, unprecedented increases in population, what's happening is we're living in smaller spaces, we're living vertically, and we need spaces that we share, that are outside of our apartments or condos. And this is absolutely critical, and it's especially critical in a city like Toronto, where we come from all over the world. We need to have common ground, places where we can gather, where we can meet each other, where we can do things together in public. So the parks, the streetscapes, the squares, all of those places, including the indoor spaces, the cafes, the public venues, uh, we're in the spectrum here at Regent Park, uh, which, as you can hear from the noise around me, is actually full of people every day doing all manner of things, a uh, whole group of kids walking in now. This is really important. This common ground is what makes the city work. I think there are barriers to overcome in creating and improving and enlarging public spaces um, if we only follow the traditional routes, which is to have a sum of money to go out and purchase a piece of land and try to create a park, a traditional park as a discrete, separate thing in the city. Um, there are limitations to doing that. The land has become extremely expensive. It's hard to get a hold of large pieces of land. So this means we really have to get much more creative. So I'm going to use Regent Park as an example. Even though it was called Regent Park, there was no park in Regent Park. What there were were parking lots. And essentially, even though we have more, we're more than doubling the population of Regent Park in a more urban form, uh, just across the street from us, on Dundas Street, there is a six acre park. Just beside us, there is a pedestrian street called Regent Park Boulevard, which will be largely closed to traffic and used for all kinds of outdoor events and cafes and markets. And then at the other end of that short street is Nelson Mandela School, and that schoolyard becomes an additional park. On top of that, there are community gardens, some of which are on the rooftops of the buildings, some of which are in smaller spaces. So we've actually managed to carve out a whole set of public spaces. At the same time, this place has gotten much denser and more populated. And very often, what's important is not just the individual spaces, but the networks. If you think of how we use public spaces, for example, cycling, jogging, walking on trails, look at our waterfront. It's the connectivity along the whole waterfront that makes it magical. The fact that now you can start in Mississauga, you can work your way all the way through uh, the western part of Toronto, Mimico, Long Branch, and all along the Martin Goodman Trail, through the former city of Toronto, on the center, uh, Central Harbor, find your way out to the Portlands, and eventually to the beach and to the Scarborough Bluffs. And it's all those connections that make those spaces accessible to the larger public. Communities are already empowering themselves. This is what's really interesting. The solutions to these problems are not only top down, but they're also coming bottom up. So we have 1,600 parks in Toronto. Many of them have friends groups that have formed people who live nearby or feel a strong attachment to those parks who've come together to be stewards of their local parks. I'm on the board of a, a wonderful group called Park People that has emerged in the last few years to actually assist all these friends groups and local advocates to work with the city, to work with funders, to develop programs and projects, to give people information about how to access and use things in parks from staging events to holding picnics to deal with permitting issues. So I, I think that bottom-up groundswell around parks, which people identify with more than anything else in their neighborhoods, 
they often define where they live in the city by their local parks, is just as important as what we do top down. I'm extremely glad that the Emerging Leaders Network um, has taken on this project to do with public spaces, has put a focus on public spaces. I think basically that is, as I, I said in the beginning, I think that's one of the most fundamental things that we need in order to live in this remarkably diverse society. It goes back to the spaces we share and how we come together. I think the emerging leaders have a great role to play on this issue as on many other issues in being a kind of interface between communities and different levels of government, the philanthropic sector, foundations, in helping people to articulate the needs, in helping communities to actually get access to resources, and in seeing this not as an isolated activity, but as part of a larger picture of making a healthy city. I, I think we're at a point now where the Toronto that's starting to emerge is so different, so much more powerful, uh, so expanded, so dynamic compared to what it was a generation ago uh, that we really need all hands on deck. And I think the younger generation, uh, the people who are in their 20s and 30s who are coming up are a tremendous source of innovative ideas, of inspiration, of energy. And in any successful city, what's really important is the passing of the baton from one generation to another. Um, in all my work, um, I always find myself with sort of, I'll call myself an elder, uh, and there's a middle generation, and then there's that younger generation, and the dialogue, the communication among, and I'm arbitrarily calling it three, it's actually a, a kind of spectrum of ages, but the dialogue among people of different ages, each contributing different sensibilities, different ways of looking at issues, different knowledge, um, is really important in order to get holistic solutions and, and breakthroughs in thinking. So um, I think the Emerging Leaders Network as a way of tapping the potential of this extraordinary talent pool that we have in the Toronto City region is really important. The regional focus obviously uh, is essential because we, we don't live in the city of Toronto. We live in the city that you see from an airplane which has no municipal boundaries and it's actually over six million people, it's growing rapidly. In the next few decades, we'll be up to 13 million people. And it extends all the way around the Golden Horseshoe, up to Lake Simcoe, over to Oshawa, to Hamilton, and beyond. And it's all one integrated urban region. And the solutions to many of our problems and the opportunities really can only be perceived at the regional scale. My advice to the emerging leaders is, um, I think what many people might say to you, uh, be bold, be inventive, uh, don't accept the strictures and the conventions and all the reasons why not, because there are lots of them, you'll hear that all the time, we can't do this because this, that or the other, but really push back when you have good ideas and persevere, be patient, but also be forceful.